Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. The live action adaptation from Disney that just came out last week called Mulan, which in turn is based on the Chinese poem Ballad of Mulan by Guao Maokuan, and it's also based on the 1998 film which is the animated feature that had Mina Wen providing the voice of Mulan as a young girl, very adventurous, who, who soon grew up, um, at first started to become a matchmaker, but then at times when uh, her father is um, getting ready for the next battle, but since Mulan's afraid that because he's so weak that at uh, this point on she disguises herself as the warrior, as a man, to actually uh, be able to save her family's honor. Yeah. Now, I began to find this movie somewhere online because this was released by Disney Plus, the new streaming service that came out last year, as you already know. And what happened here was that it's under their premium access where you had to spend over $30 and you have to pay to watch this movie if you have Disney Plus. But I don't have Disney Plus, and if I did, I probably had to end up spending this amount of money to get the service so, for a year or so and then I'm probably going to end up spending even more to watch this movie that will come up to like over a hundred dollars and that's not fair because this movie should be released in feeders now that feeders are being reopened I mean not all feeders sadly I, I wish they were I, I'm actually beginning to wonder if if all the other feeders are going to be open by now, because they should be. Because that's why a film like this should definitely be released. By the way, so people won't have to be suffered by, you know, paying this much money to see it online or on streaming. See, that's why I'm having a problem nowadays with streaming, because the way they're charging people. And I don't think they don't seem to understand that once you watch these movies on there you know what they're gonna do they're gonna do some editing Disney's been notorious for this stuff and I noticed that they have, they have been cropping all their films lately and TV shows they even had censored some of them so what's the point I mean maybe I might would I mean sure maybe I would love to get Disney Plus for the sake of it, but again, you know, I'm, I'm just still not ready for it until they start fixing their act together. And I can't afford it right now. Because we're living in tough times as it is. And I know we're getting more streaming services already with HBO Max and all. Uh, there's also Peacock. But thank goodness I get to sign that up for free. Um, just most movies that they put out, but some movies, you know, you can actually watch it for free, but most of the movies they play, you have to pay for it. You got the pen stuff. Same goes with TV shows. Okay. So, so that, <clears throat> so that alone is just incredibly bullshit. And now they say we have to wait until December for the movie to be available for free. I know by that time it's going to end up on Blu-ray so I might as well just buy it by that month alone or perhaps maybe the following month and, it's, and let's hope it does come out on Blu-ray too because I don't need this and that also led to another thing that's going on recently too is that this film has a controversy involving the two of the actors who were supporting 
police brutality in China or or Hong Kong basically. Yeah, which that led to a lot of um, complaints and all this crap going around that they refused to. They basically just want to boycott the film altogether, and they're just continue to complain over and over that this has been going on for a couple months actually uh, before this movie got released it was supposed to be released in March 27th but but they had to push it all the way forward to September 4th because they had no other choice but for Disney not to be able to play it in theaters at all already you know they've been saying to us that they were going to reopen the theaters because all this protest that's going around, it just keeps getting worse and worse. It's pathetic. And frankly, I'm getting tired of it. I'm tired of hearing so many politics shoving down my throat and trying to take everything away from all the enjoyment that I have when watching a movie. You know, Yes, everyone's like saying movies are political, but not all movies. And I think it'd be better if people would just lay off the Kool-Aid and just sit back and relax and just enjoy the movie, whatever is good or bad. Come on, people. Enough is enough. We had a lot of bad things going on lately this year. And we don't need this shit anymore. But with further ado, I just want to enjoy this movie, hoping this is good. Alright? I mean, at least from, from my enjoyment, I would rather watch this one than, than the Aladdin and the Lion King live-action adaptations that I saw last year. I mean, for better or worse, I hope it is going to be better. So, enough of this crap. So anyway, that's my argument right there. Now I'm going to get to the this live action adaptation. I'm starting right now with this review. It stars Crystal Lou, or at this rate, uh, YV Lou, who you may remember her from the movie The Forbidden Kingdom. She was the love interest of, of a guy. Um, Donnie Yen. From Ip Man, no, not IP Man though. Like I said before, when I went to the <laughs> to Best Buy during Black Friday, I meant to say Ip Man. Yeah. But yes, yeah, he was an Ip Man. Jason Scott Lee, who was in films like Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story, and he went on to do other films uh, like um, like Wapa Nui. Yeah, not a good one. Uh, he went on to do some other great films in his career here and there. Um, Yasun On, uh, Gan Lee, uh, Jet Li, yep, the martial arts uh, actor himself who's been in films like Black Mass, um, Lethal Weapon 4, uh, the, Ex the Expendable movies. Uh, as well as uh, the Forbidden Kingdom, also, you know, with Jackie Chan. Even the, um, you know, Fearless, Hero, uh, Romeo Must Die, among many others in his career. Uh, Tasi Ma, uh, Rosalind Chow, Ron Yon, uh, Jimmy Wan, Chen Tang, Nelson Lee, Chen Pei Pei, and Mingna Wan, who of course was the voice of Mulan, which at this point on, um, she makes a cameo appearance. It's written by Rick Jaffa, Amanda Silver, Lauren Heidnick, and Elizabeth Martin, and it's directed by Nikki Caro, who I believe she did the film Whale Rider from 2002. It's actually an excellent film. The movie begins when we meet Mulan 
who started out as a young girl, played by Crystal Wayao, um, who lives in rural Imperial China with her family. We learn that she's an adventurous and very active girl who could do anything, you know, already, you know, learning all the steps of martial arts here, or, or actually chasing a chicken around. But, not to mention, you know, her father, uh, Zhao, who's uh, played by Taze Ma, um, who's just teaching her about all the other lessons here and there, and also her daughter. But she, he doesn't pay attention much, though, too, but also shows him the seal of, of a phoenix. But also, um, therefore, it was at the disappointment of her mom who hopes that one day she'll be able to find a husband to marry. As soon as she grew up, that's now being played by Rafi Lu, and Crystal Lu, is being forced to met with a matchmaker, so she had to be able to learn all these steps to actually uh, pour some tea, you know, joining in with uh, her sister. But unfortunately, things were pretty messed up, too, because a spider started to appear. <laughs> and she was trying to cover it. Of course, you know, she also had to put up a lot of makeup and everything to make it look as what a matchmaker should be. But this is exactly what she had to practice so it could bring honor to us all and her family. But in the North region... But in the northwestern region, an outpost is being invaded by Roman warriors under the leadership of Bore Khan, who's played by Jason Scott Lee, uh, joining in with his assistant, a witch named Yan Lan, who's played by Don Lee, is able to ship shift, you know, begin to transform into any other kind, like a soldier or even a bird, to refrigerate the entire town. And since she did transform herself to a soldier to report of the attack of the Emperor of China, causing him to issue the conception decree for one man in each family. So as the soldiers had arrived in Mulan's village to list them, joining in with uh, her father Zhao, who's, uh, as you may know, is being forced to volunteer as he does not have a son at all. But Mulan realized that her elderly father would not survive in the war because he's very weak. So what she do was that to dishonor him, she had to, but to help him, she decided to flee with his armor, horse, and sword to join the army, disguises herself as a man, and becomes a warrior by going straight to the training camp which is being run by Commander Tung, played by Donnie Yen, previously served with uh, Zhao in the previous war. So, since then, she started succeeding in training, you know, joining in with all the other soldiers, you know, most of which are actually <laughs> basically uh, comic reliefs around. I mean, like, you know, they had to keep on training, they had to keep talking about, you know, what girl that they should meet, or any other kind. Kind of like in the movie from 1978. Um, so yeah, things were going so well. And meanwhile, Bore Khan's army continues to advance by causing Toon to end training early and send the Balion to fight. So that's where it becomes a battle, with Mulan chasing some of the Bore Khan's troops on horseback, but it's being confronted by Zon Lane, who actually knows her secret. So at that point on, she attempts to kill her. It was being saved of her leather armor that she used to hide her, her particular figure. So now, she becomes herself again and starts to fight all these soldiers, joining in with the help of, of the soldiers of Zhao to go after uh, Borai Khan's army, and which also led to an avalanche. Uh, already they were uh, blocked by the shields, so the arrows don't hit them. 
But at that point on, uh, they were sending out all the bombs, and they did hit uh, half the army, so half of them have been killed. So at this rate, they had to use reinforcements to actually stop them, and they killed half of the armies around, So, and all the armies, so now they, they finally ended the battle this way. They were Mulan and her horse and, and save everyone. But now they begin to find out her true identity and she was forced to be kicked out of the army until she began to find out what's happening uh, coming from Zhao Lane informing that yes the Emperor is going to be killed by Bori Khan. So at that rate she came back to Commander Tung and the rest to to actually warn them that the Emperor is going to be attacked and maybe it would be best if you hire me to fix all this and save save them from Boi Khan, which that's what led to the, the climax where it was somewhere in a construction site where the Emperor is at or tied up by Borei Khan, and that's where it, it becomes a battle between her and Borei. He was finally defeated. Um, she lost her sword uh, during the, the battle, and then um, she finally saved uh, the Emperor. And yes, he's played by uh, Jet Li. Um, so now, um, finally, everything was um, all settled. Um, now, uh, there was a victory party that happened at the end. And then, the following day, uh, when Commander Tung and his soldiers came by to congratulate uh, Mulan from saving the village and the Emperor and all, he actually received her a gift which turned out to be the sword and he was going to give it to her father it's hoping that there will be another chance to join the Emperor's Guard and there you go so that's the movie and for the live action adaptation I it was very fantastic in my opinion I thought they really did an excellent job it, it looks uh, well done. The location is definitely perfect for this film because you know it's supposed to be set in China. Um, the characters really nailed their performances as much as they could. I think they had the energy that they can definitely provide. Um, Wafi Lu um, definitely nailed it as Mulan. Um, Donnie Yen was great. Uh, Jason Scott Lee was uh, very uh, intense as the villain uh, Borei Khan, uh, joining in with uh, his assistant uh, Yan Lam, played by Gong Li. She's beautiful, but you know that she is who she is. You know, a shapeshifter who could transform to everything, but she begins to know through her mind because she is very psychic. Um, uh, as for the rest of, of the other cast, I mean, Jed Li was, was the ruler of, of China. It's, it's fascinating to see. I mean, it's hard to believe that really was Jet Li because he almost looks a little unrecognizable. Uh, Taze Ma is great too, and, and so is all the other actors. And it was nice to see a cameo by Mina Wen, who basically is the esteemed guest. So she's the one that introduced to Mulan towards the end of the movie. So, <laughs> what do you know? You know the real Mulan introducing the new Mulan. Uh, the movie itself almost reminded me of all the other martial arts films, or pretty much all the army films in China. So it blends in very well. So they know what they were doing. Um, now, of course, they're not going to get uh, the comic reliefs of, of Mushu, who was voiced by Eddie Murphy, nor the Cricket. Um, which I can understand that, too. I mean, they wanted to keep it on its actual story, 
You know, I'm trying to make it look and feel exactly what a Mulan story should be. So that's what they're trying to do. And I appreciate what Disney was, was doing. So they, they didn't want to go for that. So instead they went for the Phoenix. So yes, we do see the Phoenix flying around when Mulan uh, goes around. So, so this was basically her, her aid here. I mean, there's nothing wrong with loving both. I mean, I could take uh, the Mulan from 1998 as opposed to the sequel to be more like a, a different universe. So I can accept that too. So, in a way, it's, it's not easy having to do a story as long as it's done perfectly. So, it's the best they could do. Um, and I love the cinematography. And the action scenes are very incredible. I mean, you could probably assume that they did use stunt doubles to create all these acrobatic um, martial art moves. Especially ones that Mulan was doing. And I, I know they would definitely use like some green screen effects to uh, and some CGI to create the, the Phoenix. I love the location that they set it on. And everything is just exactly what it was told. I mean, maybe it did need a little more to the story, but that's okay. I think they really nailed it there. It also has a lot of heart and energy in the story. So there's nothing wrong with that. So there's no need for all these complaints and all this utter, utter crap that's going around over one movie. And I mean one movie alone. I mean, they had a controversy with the 1998 film? I don't think so. And it also shows that Mulan is definitely the strongest uh, girl of China. I mean, she can definitely kick butt, no doubts. I mean, even in disguise as a soldier, amazing. And magnificent, too. Uh, also to note that it's not a musical. But it has a soundtrack which features the song Reflections by Christina Aguilera. As you may know, she did sing the 1998 version of, for the animated feature. Um, which at the time, she was relatively unknown. But she was already becoming a superstar at that point. Because she started out uh, earlier in the Mickey Mouse Club. Which joins in with... Uh, you know, those two, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. She's better of the three, though. I mean, she has a very magnificent voice of hers, very strong vocals. I mean, no doubt about it, she nails it. She's, she's actually uh, a Latin singer herself. Uh, I mean, she does sing in Spanish. Um, yeah, she could be sexy, nothing wrong with that, and attractive. Uh, she's been doing that for years, um, for uh, all of her music videos and all those other songs she's done. But it's nice to know that she's still singing, and I like her. Um, and speaking of reflections, there's also a Chinese version of it, uh, sung by Crystal Lu herself, who's portrayed as uh, Mulan. And she's a singer, so I thought she really nailed it too. Um, this exactly sounds more like the 1998 version, only dubbed in Chinese. So, yeah, Chris Liu is a very powerful singer right there. That's what I don't understand. So, see the film for yourself. I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, just don't bother having to listen to all this political stuff. I mean, this is what's taken away with all these other movies nowadays, including Captain Marvel. Yeah, I feel like this is Captain Marvel all over again when, when it comes to this. And this needs to stop. Okay? Because this is why, you know, we never get a chance to see anything anymore. Um, I really wish this movie did got released in theaters. I mean, this movie would actually look even better on the big screen. It was really meant for that too. 
even the IMAX. But because of the pandemic, you can't have it all. Uh, but hopefully, it'll do well. I mean, it's not making much, though, because of the stream. And that's the problem, too, because it's not doing well. Because of I mean, if it, had, if it had came out in theaters, though, it would have made more for its $200 million budget. There you go. So that's Mulan. And I give the movie... Um, Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.